Hello, this will be a tutorial on JavaScript and the subject will be a shopping cart. So imagine you wanted to make a shopping cart for a website and you want to be able to add items to the cart and remove items from the cart and display the items in the cart. Um, this is more about learning JavaScript and the basics of JavaScript rather than making like a super detailed shopping cart. Um, the tutorials will span, you know, a, f a bunch of videos. It'll take a while to get through them all. So I'm going to go through everything step by step rather than, you know, just cutting straight to the finished product, right? So, you know, we'll build, you know, some some samples and then, you know, f fix them and improve on them through several iterations, okay? So here I am and I have, uh, you know, a basic, you know, uh, HTML page here. And to start off, I'm going to put the JavaScript for the shopping cart into the page. Later, we'll move this to its own document so we can share it across several pages, right? Um, or share it between, you know, different projects, too. But just to get started here, I'm going to, uh, you know, add the script tag to the bottom of my page. Okay, so here's my page here. And then maybe at the top of the page here, I'll put an H1 and... And we'll just name this shopping cart. Wait, we'll name it shopping cart. There we go, right? We'll name it shopping cart. And then that way, you know, we'll be able to see that in the page. For most of the beginning of this example, we're going to use the console, okay, to display everything. So how do we get started with our shopping cart? Let me, uh, let me get rid of that and make a new page here. And then I'm going to... Um, find my document here, which is somewhere in this uh, folder here. Where's my shopping cart tutorial? There it is. So, um, so there we go. It still says chopping cart. Okay. We're going to make a chopping cart, right? Um, it's more fun than a shopping cart. Everybody's using shopping carts, right? There we go. Okay, so now it says shopping cart. Okay, so now we're normal. Um, so anyway, so here we are, and I've got, you know, just my basic HTML page, and then I've got a script tag. And I'm going to place the script tag at the bottom of the page because the script in the script tag will be run, the JavaScript code here will be run by the browser as soon as it's loaded. So if the code here wanted to do anything with the contents of the page up above it, you know, we wouldn't be able to, re, you know, we'd be able to um, act on that if the script comes afterwards. If we put the script up above, then you know the script will run before the stuff down here loads. For this example, it's not going to matter, but later it's going to be important. So anyway, so here we are. So how do we keep track of stuff in the shopping cart? Well, you know, the shopping cart is essentially a list, right? You know, you, you buy something at the store or add something from the store to your cart, and it goes in the list. And then when you view the, 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 the cart, you're going to view the list of items and see them listed. Okay, so, you know, essentially the, uh, the cart will be an array. So in JavaScript, we uh, define an array in this way. And the first time you declare a variable, you always put the keyword var. Okay, that's actually not strictly required, but we're going to always do that. Okay, we'll talk more about that later, um, why, why that is and what the effect of using var has on your, on your code, right? Um, so anyway, you know, I made this, uh, this array variable here and the array is defined with square brackets and it can contain a list of items. So if I put a list of letters in the array like this, then, you know, there, there it is. I've got one value or one identifier that contains a list of multiple values. Okay. And that's, that's what an array is. Okay. And you can add items to the array or delete items from the array. And if you want to see what the array is, you can, you know, use console.log to display it. Okay, so there we go. I'll, I'll create an array. It's got three items in it, and then I'll log the array to the console. So this will be our first lesson, right? Create an array, put some items in the array, display the array in the console. So the console is over here. I'm using Chrome, 
And in Chrome, when you control click in the window or right click, you'll get this inspect element option here and you choose that. And then Chrome will display the inspector down here at the bottom. And the inspector can inspect, you know, all sorts of different things. And if we switch it to the JavaScript console, then we'll see the output from our console log messages, like they'll get printed here. So let me refresh this, and then you can see that I've printed the array. <clears throat> so, you know, what else can we do with the array? Well, that's, you know, pretty much what we put in, and we're getting the same thing out. Um, what if I wanted to say console.log, and now I want to get the first item out of the array? So to get one element from the array, okay, we have to understand that each item in the array is stored at an index, and the index of the first item is 0, and then the next item is 1, and the next item is 2, and the next would be 3, 4, 5, right? Okay, so there are no indexes below 0, and you can have pretty much any, you know, number of items. You could have hundreds or thousands of items in an array, okay? And so now if I, you know, if I say array bracket zero, you know, I'm getting the first item, which is item A, right? So let's, uh, let's refresh it here. So I'll just do, you know, you can click the refresh button or, you know, do, uh, you know, view reload page. I'm just doing command R in Chrome to refresh the page. And there you can see, you know, I've got the array here. And then now when I console log array bracket zero, I get the value at the first index, okay? So uh, how would we get the second index? Well, you know, if I put a number one here and then refresh my page, it says B instead of A, right? So, uh, so that's how we get at items in the array. You can add items to the array and count the number of items in the array. Let's try that. So uh, imagine um, we want to say console dot log array.length, okay? So length tells you how many items there are. So now um, when I refresh, you can see I've got three items, and then I printed the whole array and the second item, right? So array length is the number of items in your array. What if you add an item to an array? So we can say array.push, okay? So push adds an item into the array. So if I want to add an item, like I want to add D to the array, and then maybe afterwards I want to get the uh, the length again, just to confirm that there are, you know, there's one more item in there. You know, I'll type in array.length like this, right? So there we go. So I did array length gives me three. Here it doesn't show anything, but we pushed an item into the array. And then here we get the length again, and now it's four because we've added an extra item. And then when I print the array out, you can see I got four items there. And down here, you know, B is still the second item. Zero, one, two, and then D would be three. Okay, so that's all good, right? I'm hoping you guys are picking that up. Please feel free to, uh, you know, post any comments if you like or ask me any questions. Okay, so uh, so that shows how maybe, you know, imagine our shopping cart, maybe we want to add, you know, an apple to the shopping cart, um, a brush to the shopping cart, and a carrot, you know, I'm shopping, right, and I bought those things, and maybe I want to add um, some dice, right, to the shopping cart, okay, I don't know, I'm shopping for some random stuff, right, Um and there we go. So I get apple, brush, carrot, dice, right? So that's okay. Um, imagine that, you know, when I'm displaying the entire list here, this is really not practical for us in programming terms. You know, we're just logging array and then, you know, the computer kind of just prints out the, you know, the, this, you know, value for the array, but that's not a practical value. Like we can't use that in our program. This we can use and length we can use. So if we really want to print all the items in the array, we'll have to do this. Um, I'm going to just delete these console log messages here. 
right? I'll even delete the where we added the dice. I don't really need any dice, right? So imagine that we want to loop through all the items in the array, okay? So I'm going to start with a for loop here, and our for loop um, is going to look like this. It's going to start with four parentheses and then the curly brackets. I'm going to encourage everybody that's doing this, do not get sloppy with your code and type some of it here and some of it over here and then tab this one three times, you know, right? Do you see where that's all random, right? It doesn't look very good. Um, get a pattern, okay? So you can see whenever I type the code, all of my code <clears throat> is going to be lined up here on the same, you know, tab stop, okay? And then when I add code inside of the curly braces, this is called a code block, and we'll do this with functions, if statements, and for loops. And when I add code inside this curly bracket, and um, I'll always tab it once, okay? So the code will go here when it's inside the code block. So let's be very careful about doing that. And when we name things, we're always going to begin with a lowercase letter, except in a couple cases, okay? Where we start with a uppercase letter, and I'll talk about that later. Okay, so let's always do lowercase, and then always align everything and carefully tab it so it looks neat and organized. Okay, trust me, you'll have fewer mistakes, okay? So anyway, so here we are. We got this for loop, right? And how do I use the for loop to get all the items in the array? Well, there's a couple ways that you can do it. Let's do for var i equals zero. Let's count while i is less than array dot length. And then we'll add one to i with each loop. So what does this mean? Well, the first part of the of the for loop, and there's three parts here. There's, they're each separated by the semicolon, okay? So there's one section here, the second section is here, and the third section is at the end. So uh, the for loop here says we're going to repeat and we're going to count with the variable i, and it's going to start with a beginning value of zero, okay? So we're counting with this variable i. It's going to have an initial value of zero, and then the second part here says the condition for the count, okay? So this is sort of the initializer for the count, and this is the, or for the loop, and then this is the, the, the you know, the reason we keep loop, looping or the check, like, you know, should we loop again? If this is true, then we loop again. So this is the condition for the loop. And the condition here says i is less than array dot length and we saw earlier array length returns the the number of items here and then the third part of the of the loop is the increment so in other words every time we loop we're going to increment i so the plus plus is a shortcut for adding one to i so if i started at zero and then we did all the code here and the condition was was still true i being less than array length, then we'll add one to i and then do the block here again, okay? So the curly bracket brackets represent a code block, so we'll call that the code block. So anyway, so here's our loop and it's going to count from zero to, you know, less than array length. And then we can use console.log array bracket i to get each item in the array and print it to the console. So we'll save that, and then we'll um, we'll go back to our page here and refresh it. Oh look, there's each item in the array. Now what's what's nice about this is if we use this system, we can add other items to the array. You know, with for example array dot push right, and then. Um, Right, we'll add some ducks to the to the list, right? And then now there's four items in there, and, and I don't need to adjust this because it's going to loop for the length, and if there's more items, then the length will be greater and we'll loop more times, right? So there we go. So now we got all four items, right, without having to do much extra stuff. Okay, so that's going to get us started. We're going to have to do more with this because, you know, if you put some, something into your cart, 
not only are you going to have to know what that item is, you're going to have to um, know how many of that item you have in the cart. Like you might want to buy, you know, one brush, but you might buy four apples and six carrots, right? And I don't know how many ducks, right? Okay, so anyway, that'll get you, get us started on this, and then we'll continue um, with a few more videos before we're done, right? So I hope that was entertaining and um, useful for people watching. Thanks.